Welcome to another edition of MacBreak Studio. I'm Steve. This week, I'm going to show you how to create this effect. If you have a clip of a recent trip to a ghost town near Las Vegas, Nevada, and I want to start by adding the text element to this by moving my playhead, pressing I to set an endpoint, then Control T to create a connected title. I'll then open the inspector by pressing Command-4. Then in the text inspector, I'll enter the location. I then want to turn this text into 3D text by scrolling down and placing a check next to 3D text. Now instead of creating the look of this 3D text from scratch, I'm going to use one of the very helpful built-in 3D styles templates. I like Monolith because it makes the 3D text look very heavy. So when it falls out of the sky and lands on the ground, thereby causing the resulting shake in the frame. However, I still want to make a few minor changes to the 3D text. So I'm going to scroll down, reveal the 3D text properties. And right now the front edge is set for round but I want to make the text hollow by choosing square ring. I like the square ring because when I move the text, it reveals the image through the letters. Now, I want this text to start up at the top, out of frame, and drop down into frame. Now, you would think that you could animate the position properties of the 3D text using the inspector. But for reasons I'm still trying to figure out, Apple never gave us the ability to keyframe the position or rotation parameters of 3D text. So you're going to have to do this another way. Click the Video Inspector button at the top of the inspector. Then use your Y position controls and then scrub in the Y hot scrubber to move your text off screen. Notice that I can keyframe the position properties in the Video Inspector. In the timeline, move your playhead to the beginning of the the text object, then set a keyframe. Because this is a heavy stone object, it'll only take a few frames to hit the bottom of the frame. So I'm going to tap my right arrow key three times to move the playhead three frames. Then using my Y hot scrubber, I'm going to drag downward to position the text in the lower part of the frame. And while I'm here, I'm going to rotate the text along the x-axis to make it a little flatter in alignment with the ground. So let's play that back. Okay, that's great, but nothing happens when the text hits the ground. And I'd like the ground to shake a little bit as it makes contact. So using my arrow, I'm going to find the frame where the text lands, then hold the command key down, tap the down arrow to select the background video clip and press command B to blade the clip. I'll move the playhead forward about five or six frames. Press C to select the clip and press command B to blade again. Open the effects browser by pressing command five. Locate the earthquake effect. By the way, you just select all and you can enter it in the search field and just drag and drop it on that little clip then close the effects browser. If I play this back, you'll notice there's a subtle shaking, but I want it a bit more dramatic. So I'm going to select the clip, and in the inspector, I'm going to crank up the amount for earthquake, and I'm going to crank up the amount of layers. Also, I want to change the epicenter of the earthquake. Notice it's center frame. I want to move this right at the bottom of the text and play. That looks pretty good. Another thing that will help sell this and make the effect even more dramatic is to add a dust effect so that when the title hits the ground, it creates a plume of dust that floats around the text. To do that, we're going to quickly jump into Motion. In Motion, select New or press Command N. Select Motion Project, 
make sure your resolution and your frame rate matches your Final Cut Pro 10 project. I happen to know the project in Final Cut Pro is 24 frames per second. I'll leave the duration at 10 seconds and click open. In the library pane of the inspector, locate particle emitters, then choose nature. Final Cut Pro has hundreds of built-in effects, particle effects, rain, bubble, explosion, fire. There's a lot of stuff that you can use in Final Cut Pro 10. Locate the emitter labeled Drop Impact. Then with your playhead at the beginning of the timeline, click Apply. If I play this, you'll see it's a little plume of smoke that kind of fades away. There's only one thing we need to do is publish this smoke so that it's available within Final Cut Pro 10. From the file menu, choose Publish Template. Make sure to check Publish as Final Cut Pro Generator. Choose a category. I'm going to choose the Steve category I created in the last episode of MacBreak. Then name this Dust Cloud and click Publish. Back in Final Cut Pro 10, I'm going to open the Generator sidebar, locate my custom category, and locate that dust cloud I just published. In the timeline, I'll move the playhead where I want to bring in that dust cloud, which will be right after the title lands, right about there. You want to give it a beat after it hits, before the dust comes out. So right about there, I'm going to select dust cloud and press Q to connect it at the playhead location. I play this, certainly plays and comes in, but it's in the wrong place. Select the dust cloud, turn on your transforms, and we'll go ahead and scale and shape this dust cloud. Let's see, move it into place. I'm going to scale this along the X axis a bit more so that it covers the text. And I'm going to change the blend mode to add. And currently the dust cloud is above the title, so let's reverse these. I'm take the title, hold down my shift key to constrain my movement, and move the title above the dust cloud. Then turn off the transform controls. Let's play that back. If you do need to reposition the dust cloud, you can Again, select Transforms and just, just move it down to where you need it. And then turn it off. The last thing that's missing is, of course, a sound effect. I'm going to position my playhead right where the text meets the ground. And I'm going to go into my Sound and Photos browser into Sound Effects. In the search field, I'm going to type in boom. Of course, all of the boom effects come up. I can, I can preview any one of them. Some of them are good, some of them not so good. Now, what's really great about these sound effects is I don't have to use the entire effect. I can use just a portion of it. So, for example, the beginning of this effect doesn't work, but the second part of the effect does. So I can position my skimmer right there and then just drag out a range. Press Q to connect that sound effect right at the playhead. Let's bring up the volume a little bit and play that back. So there you have another dramatic and interesting way to bring 3D text on the screen. Thanks for watching.